fact, the closing years of the last century, I had striven to give the world improved and cheaper means of communication by electrical transmissions through space. I'm Ray Clark. Join me as we go off in search of the ghost of Marconi in Chelmsford. It is natural that I should also have devoted considerable time and research to methods which would bring distant countries of the world into closer and more intimate touch with one another. In these days of iPods and digital radio, I wonder what youngsters would make of an old-fashioned wireless. I took one along to Malden Primary School. I think how the um, sound comes from to the radio when you tune it in sounds a little like this. Oh, this is the inside. Look at that. What do you make of that then? A moment. There's no time. Very interesting. That comes. Doesn't that look scary, eh? Yeah. yeah. When these radios were out, I'd, I'd think the men, men that done it would sound like this. Hello, this is London. Which is the BBC? This is the BBC. I'd have done it some push style. So what effect did the Marconi era have on Chelmsford? Certainly as far as uh, Chelmsford is concerned, with regard to Marconi, it was on two main trading routes. One nearer to London, two nearer to the coast. So he set up his very first factory here in 1899. He gave terif terrific employment to a number of people, of course, in the town. And of course all the businesses around here, uh, they did extremely well from the a number of people, the families that started their homes in and around Chelmsford. Many, many people owe their living and their livelihood, certainly to Marconi. There are four main areas where you can still see evidence of Marconi in Chelmsford. The trail takes us to Rittle, New Street, Hall Street and Great Baddow. This is uh, part of Rittle, uh, where the early experiments of broadcasting took place. We're now in Melbourne Court, the old army hut of uh, which Marconi purchased to carry out the work uh, was at the corner of this field at the bottom here. They wheeled um, an old piano from the Cock and Bell pub every morning to help with the uh, broadcast which was taking place. Dame Nanny Melville didn't actually come down here, but uh, Captain Peter Eckersley of the Marconi Company, who led the team, carried out all the broadcasts from this old army hut. Uh, they named the place Melbourne Court after the first uh, live uh, broadcast by now Dame Nanny Melville at New Street, where we're going to very shortly. Peter, busy road, New Street, Chelmsford. This was head office, was it? Yes, it was. It was uh, Marconi's uh, main factory, the first purpose-built wireless factory in the world. Uh, most of the work which Marconi did right up until 1970 was done in this factory before they started expansion and went to other factories with different products. But uh, it has a long history. It's almost a hundred years of work uh, for many thousands of people Jumps of people in particular. And Marconi's office, that one there? Marconi's office is the one that you can see on the right hand side of the door and I had the privilege of using that office for the last 12 years of my service with the company. This is the Hall Street uh, factory uh, which Marconi started in 1899. The plaque on the wall denotes that this was the first uh, wireless factory where Marconi manufactured the early equipments. There was 26 men and half a dozen boys producing the products. And also, at the far side of the factory was one of the very tall masts, the second one being in Roman Road, which is not very far away from, from which the early signals from the wireless experiments were made. So Peter, this is Hall Street. Where do we go to now in the trail of Marconi? Well, we're off to Great Baddow to Marconi Research Laboratories where the early experiments were carried out before they went into the main factories of Marconi. This is the Marconi research establishment uh, where the early work on, and experiments on Marconi products took place before they were designated back to the various factories of the company 
both in radar and broadcasting and sometimes in aeronautical. The mast in the background is known as the chain hole mast. It's a mast which was used extensively in World War II to warn uh, the English people of the coming of German aircraft through the radar system which it was set up throughout the whole of Essex. I placed a single earphone, earphone to my ear and started listening. The receiver on the table before me was very crude. A few coils and condensers and a coherer. No valves, no amplifiers, not even a crystal.